Let's talk to a Champions League winner, shall we? Yeah, we uh, should. Luis Garcia uh, joins us on the programme. Uh, Luis, great to see you. Uh, what did you make of that? Which side do you think, which manager will be happier with the draw? Uh, hello, good to see you guys. Uh, I'm still here with my team. I come on the team to try to sleep because I'm still excited about these two games that we have seen. Uh, in this Real Madrid uh, against uh, City, uh, I think both managers are going to be happy. Uh, we have to understand that these are probably two of the best teams in the world, two of the best teams in Europe, and they knew that this, uh, this match, this tie was going to be decided in the second leg. And the first one was about to try to, to, to check, to put a, a few punches and see how, how the, the, the game means uh, both teams with a totally different system, totally different style of football. Manchester City has always kept the, the same personality with the possession, trying to bring players in one side and, and try to find the, the space in the other side. Real Madrid more in transition with the quick players. I think that Mini, you and Rodrigo today, they've been uh, quite impressive, always a threat every single time that uh, you could see oh, Manchester City uh, lose the ball in, in the middle of the park or in the last there. Real Madrid was ready to, to start uh, on the challenge and bring the ball quick to to those players and well you've seen how dangerous and how a big threat they are uh, scoring the goal so I think the both uh, managers have to be happy of course uh, Manchester City playing the second leg at home is always an advantage and we that's why we I thought that they were the favorites uh, when we saw the, the draw when you play the second one at home you try to balance uh, your your game in the first one and see what happened in the second one with your crowd so I think both managers must be happy because definitely it's been one of the most exciting games of the season yeah no doubt about it Lucho first and foremost it's great to see you of course uh, but 108 seconds into this first leg Bernardo Silva scored uh, an unusual free kick Lunin caught off guard I mean it was disappointing from the goalkeeper maybe explain to us what was going through your mind when you saw that opening goal but then also talk to us about the response from Real Madrid and how they got that advantage with two very quick goals yeah, exactly. I think there was a, a bad uh, um, a manager of the of the wall. You play, you put only one player, and you put it not covering your space. Lunin was just focusing what that cross was going to be, and Bernardo Silva that knows everything about this sport, is that the kind of experience and that fantastic left foot, put the ball right there. Very difficult for for the keeper. Uh, he needed a, a quick reaction, and it was the first goal. And it showed that uh, when you see a game like this one against Manchester City, you know that they are gonna keep the the ball, keep the possession and try to frustrate you, uh, try to, uh, arriving late on the ball. But uh, you are playing at the Bernabeu and you are playing against uh, another kind of beast. We are talking about Real Madrid playing at the Bernabeu. You know that the reaction is not, not going to be other than go forward. Try to bring the ball quickly out to the to the players up front. And we saw the, the goal from Camavinga. They must have been a little bit lucky with that deflection. And the second one, fantastic pass from Mini Junior. That I was surprised that we didn't see it today on the left side. It was more Rodrigo covering that space and Mini Giulio trying to make us a second strike and morally be in the middle was the one assisting to Rodrigo for the second goal so I think that when you play against Real Madrid you know that or you put the game to bed and you score four goals or you have to be ready to fight until the last minute. Yeah you certainly do Lucha let's talk about Phil Foden an absolutely brilliant goal uh, from him got the game back on uh, for Manchester City and I think now, having watched that, if we didn't think it beforehand, he really is a big game player, one of the best attacking midfielders in world football, isn't he? Yeah, and what a season he's having. He's the four goal in the, in, during the week, a hat-trick uh, for the Premier League game last weekend. And he was quite quiet in the first uh, 45 minutes, keeping on the right side, trying to keep the, the game open. A lot of people into the middle, so he wasn't involved much into the game. But as soon as he received the ball uh, right there, he tried just a couple of minutes before, and it was a good save from Lunin. But that strike, it was unstoppable. I think that there is no keeper in the world who can save that kind of strike. He's in a great moment, um, Guardiola mentioned during the whole season, the best player of the season for Manchester City today, once again, was a key player scoring that goal to balance the, uh, the tie. What a strike, one of the best goals of the season for in the Champions League. Hey, Lucho, there's been 23 goals in the last five games between these two teams in knockout stages of this wonderful competition. Um, I'm just wondering how you think Ancelotti might approach this second leg now, knowing what happened last season. You were very close and well and truly in that first leg and in the second leg. I mean, City made you look a little bit silly with a 4-0 victory. So what's different from last season's Real Madrid to this season that makes you think maybe they can go there and potentially win it? 
Yes, Ancelotti has been talking a lot about courage and personality. Courage and personality. You cannot arrive to Manchester City Stadium and don't think that you can win and be afraid of playing your game. I think that today it is being proven that they know that Manchester City is going to win this sometimes, some places. Not many, but they go some some places where you can get advantage. And that is behind the striker, behind the defenders, the spaces that they are created because the line of Manchester City today, as you've seen, it was right into the middle so the spaces behind they are meek they are massive when you play as you got players like Rodrigo and Mini Juniors they know how to to get on those get involved on those places and the fast and quick that they are you're gonna use them so I expect Real Madrid to do exactly that we've seen Manchester City that is not gonna change his plan going at, the, at their own stadium with their own crowd keep the ball manage the tempo of the game dominate the game as at, the, at any stage and be ready to try to score that goal once again today we were missing a little bit from uh, from Erling Haaland, so we expect him to be important into the game at home. But definitely Real Madrid needs to get those transitions in a better way. Today, in two or three, we saw that it, they were always a threat, so Ancelotti is going to be ready for, for that. To bring those players, two or three players that can run, we saw the Valverde, Rodrigo and Vinicius, and the players into the middle, like Cross, like Camavinga, try to put balls, quickly balls, to those spaces. And well, you saw what happened today with Rodrigo. Luis, looking ahead to the second leg, Give us the players' perspective. You played in many two-legged knockout uh, games in the Champions League. What's the psychology of the players? They've got now a week to prepare, get ready for what's about to come with the tie perfectly poised at three all. How do you think they will get ready for this return leg at the Etihad and how the psychological battle will play out over, the, say, the first 20 minutes of the game? Yeah, exactly. You're totally right. Those first 20 minutes, you have to get ready mentally to be ready for those 20 minutes. No mistakes. We saw today one of the looning ones. You put one uh, one goal uh, um, in front of for the game and, and you're going to struggle for the rest of it. So you have to be very ready to balance on that. There is no more games. You cannot think about, OK, we go through, we are going to be in the semifinals, we are going to play against who? Bayern Munich, Arsenal. No, 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 there is no more games. So you have to be focused that this is your final. This is the game that you have to play. This is the game you have to give 100%. I saw Vinicius Juniors sometimes uh, no, no facing on 1v1 situation in the last part of the game, and he was replaced. I think he got a small injury. I'm sure that he's going to give everything, because there is no more games if you don't put and do not win that one. So I expect that the mentality of the players is about that. Focus on what you have to do. Focus on winning your battle. And this is the last game of the season. The most important one is that, just that one. Yeah, I'm a little bit concerned, though, that Foden did come off there a little bit injured at the end of that game as well. So I'm concerned, obviously, a big player stepping up in that second leg and making sure that you manage it right. But we're, we must not forget that City have got a title race going on between the two legs as well. So there's a lot to take place, but absolutely phenomenal. I mean, what a game. It was brilliant. What a game. Lucho, great insight as always. Thanks so much uh, for joining us uh, here on Scoreline. Thank you, guys. Good to see you.